Of course, the Shaq era in Los Angeles has already hit a bump. Aside from a disappointing 10 and 8 start, distractions this week over an apparent dispute between Kobe Bryant and Carl Malone regarding the mailman's potential return. I just want to make sure that you know, my players know that I, I believe in them and I believe in what we have. So if Carl comes back, it's going to be a tremendous addition to our ball club. But if he doesn't, I'm, I'm fine with rolling with the guys that we have here because I have confidence in them too. Brace right. yourself. I'm going to defend Kobe Bryant. Let me tell you something right now. I don't think he was wrong. I have a problem with the fact that he did not call Carmelo to let him know how you felt because you know that could always be misconstrued. But at the end of the day, his comments you know weren't what, off hold base. On, hold on, hold it's on. his team. That's what's wrong with the media? How does he know what questions he's going to be asked at a press conference after practice? No, 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 necessarily wrong. It is his team and if Carl Malone is going to make a decision, he has every right to want him to make the decision. However, you do know how you feel about a particular subject. You don't need the media to assume or to prepare yourself for the fact that somebody's going to ask you about Carl Malone. You know that question's coming up, especially if you're Kobe Bryant. Greg, are you okay, though, with the guy saying that they're playing for him as opposed to the coach or the uniform or the team, the owner, the GM? The, Lakers, the Lakers are a franchise, right? Mm -hmm. He is their franchise player. I have, no I have no problem. I have no problem. With it. it is his team. <laughs> it is his team. Every, he got every play goes through. The reason why. The thing I have a problem with, though, is he did not talk to Carl Malone, number one. There were other things said. It wasn't just this interview. Boy, John, and you also, don't talk to us before you come to the show. Year, well, you're the franchise. You don't call us. For How do you years? know that? <laughs> <laughs> and on top matter of fact, of I think that, you've spoken to John before. Alan Iverson is ready to play. That's not true. <laughs> as soon as he puts on his jersey, he's taking My a man. call right there from Stephen A. Smith. Hey, I know. The man doesn't deserve a grade. He did his job. whoop de doo Congratulations. You did your job, Commissioner Stern. But at the end of the day, here's what it comes down to. When I look at Ron Artest, on one hand, I do feel that he deserves the stiffest, he deserves one of the stiffest penalty, even though I st think Stephen Jackson should have received a more severe penalty. But at the end, also, you have to take into consideration consideration. Ron Artest is somebody we know to be a very troubled individual. If we know it, if the public knew it, the league knew it. And it would be nice if the league would come out and say, you know what? We knew that he was a bit troubled. And how much did we really do to help him? I'd like somebody to answer that question for me because it seems as if everybody's ignoring the fact this guy well, needs some help. Can I answer the question? I'll answer it for you. There have been many people that his, his organization has stood behind him and tried to support him. There comes a time when, uh, when a, a human being, a grown-up, an adult, has to take a little responsibility on his son. Nobody's he, saying he doesn't look, he should take to responsibility. Him. Look, the league, look, you can't make someone take your help. You as a human being, as a man, have to be willing to accept the, well, the help that's given you can, to you. Well, sometimes you can't. We, they, we are talking well, you know about what? the strong they just the gave him, You well, trying to tell me they can't make him, him get some help? They're giving him the season. They're giving him the rest of the season off to get some help. They're That's giving, they're him, they're giving him the season to help off. Him, what are they doing to help him? him. They're giving him some time to go and get his life together. That's Obviously, all. that is the bigger issue here. I don't um, think that is. While we're on the subject of Ron Artest. Question, but when you look at the Miami Heat, the thing that strikes me is Shaq. He has not been his usual dominant self. Now, he hasn't had to be because he was playing against the Nets in Cleveland. But clearly, we can see Shaq do a lot better than he has than he has done because he hasn't had to do much thus far. Well, but Stephen, sometimes to dominate is not to dominate. His presence still dominates the game because he's such a force out there and he's still really trying to work himself back from that hamstring. But he hasn't dominated yet. That's all I'm saying, Greg. He has dominated. He has not. He has. He has so not. So is your four line. Your head line. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter whether he's in Philadelphia or right next year. The same act continues. The Sacramento... I'm telling y'all, listen, I understand all that, but I don't want to hear about the players. They've got enough weapons. They've got enough weapons, all right, to get the job done. The question is, if they don't, who's to blame? And I'm here to tell you that Jeff Petrie needs to take a strong and hard look at Coach Rick Adamant. I mean, this guy, I mean, he hasn't won any championships in Crown Island. Everybody's trying to treat him like he's Red Auerbach or something. I know that they don't have they don't have Tim Duncan, but still, you got to step up and get these boys motivated to do the job. I can't believe you going to sit there and say they have as much talent. They got four, five that. guys. They have no Don't bench. put words in my mouth. They have nobody coming off the bench to give them any kind of support. If you want to compete for a title, you have to have depth. And I you didn't know hear what? you say for that a change, last year about the for, Hey, hey, listen, yard boy. For a change, <laughs> I understand 
that right now it's not all on Rick Adelman. I was a big proponent of saying that he had a lot to do with their demise. Jeff Petrie needs to take a little blame because he has not put together a basketball team what? that can compete for a title. Oh, there is it. no stop bench it. Oh, on please. that team. Will you take please. control, please? I was take control. Say it. We might have to please. lower take the monster. <laughs> and the next thing they do is they get rid of Kerry Kittles, they get rid of Kenyon Mark. Basically, they're saying we're not trying to win a title. Hold Remember, it. he only signed there because they felt that he they he felt they were trying to compete for a title. I, they're blowing the team up and moving to Brooklyn. Greg, 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 we all know that. We empathize with Alonzo Mourning. Here's the problem. You signed a four-year deal. You didn't sign a one, two, or three-year deal. You signed a four-year deal. This is business. You're quick to tell all of us that. Anything can happen, and it's happened to him. No, 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 That's not. really the situation. Injuries happen. But what? when a team, on a coach, and when an owner takes a, makes a choice to have a philosophical change in terms of how they're going to do business, we're not trying to win a title anymore. They, in a sense, I, I can definitely understand where Alonzo's coming from. Remember, this man basically risked his life to come back and try and play for a title. I definitely hear what you're saying, but again, he signed a contract. He understands the business of the NBA. And Let me ask you a question. Play, if you hit the lottery, the should, would you give it back? No. All right, then. But that's not the point. All right, then. The, point. Point. the one that's difference, no more the one difference there between the Jason point? Kidd and him, I think Jason oh, Kidd has more than right because he led that team, that franchise, to two. You see the guys in Minnesota, Troy Hudson, Ellen <laughs> oh, Trell, Sprewell. These hairstyles, now, of course, we don't mind here because we're a Disney company, and this, that's in fact, Mickey. does look right, a little goodness. bit like Mickey Mouse. They're going for something different. So I wondered, what would you guys look like with those hairdos? And I'm thinking, this is a look you may want to go with. Bad on the white guy. I don't look bad. Bad, I don't look bad. Where's the love at? That's what I want to know. Where's the love? Uh, let me give you some love. Well, hold on, here's some love. Y'all don't look bad, Greg. Man, I thought you loved me, man. I really did. I'm convinced now. Forget y'all. Thank you. Forget Get him out of here. Man. Unplug them. All right, we'll see you again at halftime. The Rockets you and yourself. the Grizzlies coming up He's first talking, of the double He doesn't care. care. He's cut off. <laughs> learns how to play with another star player his skills might be diminished to the point where he can't win another championship some guys sometimes you guys really drive me crazy <laughs> they're awful that's really what this comes down to folks they're just awful why you look at the talent that they have they have the talent there but they don't have that zest that desire that fire lamar odom i'm talking to lamar odom the other day and he's talking about how he can't get any calls and the referees are taking him out the game that may be true but it doesn't explain the other 12, 10 guys on your roster that are not getting the job done and when you take that into account along with the fact that there's really nothing on mitch cupcheck's resume that says i can go out there and get you that supplementary part that mr scott Pippen shaft himself. Greg Anthony said it for your best. If you don't get that, what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. Everything you said is true, but the one thing you got to look at it from a GM's perspective and from a basketball team's perspective, they're one player away. Right now, they're struggling to make the playoffs, but if they get yeah, that one player... Yeah. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. You said oh, Scottie Pippen, though, no, Greg. You said yes, Scottie Pippen. Pippen. You was can't find Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen wasn't the first player in the draft. But the best player in the draft was the first player in the draft. But the best player in the draft was like the eighth and ninth. And he turned out to be. But the biggest difference isn't with the second guy. I think it's with the primary guy. I think Kobe Bryant has a hard time playing with anybody else. I don't know that that's ever going to no. be a I think that's wait, 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 wait. But y'all missing the point, though. Michael Jordan didn't do anything until he got Scottie Pippen. As great what? as he was, he what? put up monstrous, monstrous numbers. Okay. He could, he was a little better than Kobe in terms of getting his teams to the playoff. But he never competed All for right. a championship. As long as you, could, right. long as you made sure compete. you modified but that again, a little bit. Again, <laughs> right. Kobe Bryant, if they get the right kind of piece, and it can happen. You know, Mitch Kupchak is going to take some creativity on his part, but it can happen. But you're in trouble when you when you trade an MVP, and the MVP usually goes on to do just but fine. But you don't have another MVP on the roster to be. Oh, please, with. Charlie. Yeah. What about seven? One, three hundred and fifty pounds. There, you can't find seven, that every day. No, seven, he's a big man. Seven. Didn't MJ win championships when Shaq was in the league? MJ's the only one that can All right, there. All right. There's only one MJ. This is for MJ. There's only one MJ, baby. There's only, there's only one. one MJ. There's right. only one, but he ain't playing right now. Okay. They are basically equal in terms of their overall records right now. And again, Memphis continues to do it without having their health. So that team, I think, is scary come playoff time. I completely agree with you. I think that that's the most interesting series if that would have happened, simply because I think Memphis can possibly beat Phoenix. I mean, Not possibly. Is it, is, I, well, well, I'm saying possibly. That's your vocabulary. Okay. I choose my own. You understand? <laughs> Bottom line is, I think Wait, it's is that possible. any way to treat a man who kissed earlier in the show? Yeah, how, how, but absolutely, that's a way to treat him. He had no business kissing me. But did, you know you, did you hear the quote before I kissed him? <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> so that's, that's absolutely. All right. Well, Boston, you were horrible for the first two 
years, we need to give Danny Ainge some props because he's staring, he's staring them in the right direction. Give him a little props. But at the end of the day, I think Detroit, Indiana, that's still a very interesting matchup because you're talking about the possibility of Jermaine O'Neal coming back, even though they're saying you know they haven't said definitively he'll be gone. But Indiana, Detroit is always interesting. You've shown a lot of growth, man. The fact that you were able to now give Danny Ainge credit. Oh, what? I'm with you. I give him credit now, too. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Don't ship. you dare lie to America like that. Excuse uh -oh. me. I'm a man. When I am wrong, I say I'm wrong. Unlike Shaft, who doesn't like to admit such things. How dare you, Guido? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to get back at you. I'm not going to get back at you, but you know you, what time it is. You, you have to give Danny Ainge credit, though. Got to give him credit. Boss, boss is right? making moves. They're pulling away. With just show up, Pulse. You've taken about a week off. Show up now, please. <laughs> just to, You've taken about a week off. Other than that, I'm trying to recover from what the heck you did to me earlier today. I mean, oh, my God. What, I'm still trying to recover. Keep your friends Good. close. But you keep your enemies closer. Just in case. <laughs> how, how do you feel over here, Steve? How do you feel? Oh, nasty. Nauseous? But you have to admit, for an enemy, I, I think very highly of you. I appreciate that. All right, all right, look out for it. Don't, keep, keep the kisses away. Don't, don't kiss him again. One kiss, you, one kiss, I'm a show. metrosexual. Are you doing it for me? That's all we got for shooting around and brother. Two guys on. We'll see you at the point. We kiss him. Handshake, baby. We kiss him. We kiss him. Fist. You know, I was thinking that'd be a heck of a matchup. I'm going to go, I think, Phoenix, because they got better golf. I think the <laughs> golf is better in Phoenix, a little bit better than Miami, so they might get the home court. I'm going with Phoenix. I'm not betting against Shaq in the seven-game series against a team that has the golf, not the, not the I, game. I feel you on that, and I understand that, but I'm moving forward. The point is, <laughs> the say is Shaquille O'Neal is unstoppable, and I don't see anybody on Phoenix having I mean, what can they do with him? Nothing. He was unstoppable last year. Well, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Actually, he was, but the rest of his team weren't on the same page. That's not a problem in South Beach. Might have been a problem in Southern Cal. They well, might it, be on the same page, but it could be the wrong book. Whatever. You don't think that fits? See, the key is Steve Nash. They can't pressure Steve Nash, and they can't go at him on the offensive end because they don't have that kind of point guard. I think that but you would can get, get Phoenix. Physical with him. Well, who's going to get physical? You can get physical. Dwayne Wade? 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 Dwayne
know what? Malarkey. That's a that's a that's a baloney. That's exactly right. That's right. Can you get the baloney sandwich? In the hood, you can. But the problem is, and I love Tracy McGrady. This is not a knock on Tracy McGrady, but you you can't put him this year in the same category. I'll give you one guy, Dirk Nowitzki. I think has had a far better season than Trace McGrady, as great as he's been. Remember, Dirk is he has scores more points, he averages more rebounds, shoots a higher percentage. His team has won more games. He's had a bigger impact, and he doesn't have Yao Ming down there. And so, to me, Stacy uh, Tracy McGrady did not really start to play better until they made the trade he's to bring in a lot again. of other guys. That, that's because he got probably got gas. I don't know what his problem is. <laughs> it's that balarkey he had before the show. <laughs> I think it is. I think it's the one Greg Anthony has been selling to America for the past two minutes. The fact is this. He had me until he brought up Dirk Nowitzki. The bottom line is you look at Tracy McGrady, especially how Yao Ming has been slow to develop this season. All the struggles he's had. Tracy McGrady goes into Houston. The numbers that he's put up, the oh, leader that he's been. Excuse question. me. Sir, no, 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 no. Is no, 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 he no, top no. five candidate in your mind? No. And, okay. but, but not because of Nowitzki. I, it's because of Shaq, Nash, Duncan, Amari Stoudemire, and possibly Ray Allen with the year he's having Allen in Seattle. Iverson. You're, you're, you put him right there with Allen Iverson. He's certainly right there with Dirk Nowitzki. He's, 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 he's Are you crazy? He's a guy that I you think you're hating on Dirk. He's a guy I'm not hating on him. I like him. I don't like him, but I like him. He's a top ten. Which is what I said. He's a kid. You said top five. I think he's top five. I don't think he's top five. Even top ten, he's in the discussion for MVP. But you, if you're top ten, you not say he's in the discussion. I say he's top five. He's in the discussion. You didn't discuss it. I didn't say top five though. I wouldn't put him top five. No, you said that it's malarkey. That he's in the discussion. No, no, no. Malarkey. Malarkey. Not malarkey. That he's top five. You said top five. I you said, said no, no, no. Malarkey. He's not top five. All right. Here, here's one thing we can all agree on. LeBron James is pretty important to the Cavaliers. <laughs> no, we got the Cavaliers the coming up, <laughs> taking on the Kings. It's King James against the Kings and more shoot around coming up. Comfortable comfortable just looking at those shorts, man. You know what I'm saying? You got comfortable? Uncomfortable. Uh, uh, we we yeah. thought you said comfortable. Yeah, I don't know. I was all right. That's right now I guess in the Balarkey. They just fired it up in the calf. No, nah, really? you don't eat Balarkey. <laughs> oh, you don't? You step in it. Oh, you step in it. Yeah, you don't, you You're don't not supposed to eat All right, on that note, we got to go. You use poop on there. You use poop on there. The key right now has been Yao Ming is a lot more aggressive and more consistent every night. Tracy McGrady would also like me to remind Greg Anthony and Tim Legler. <laughs> he said everybody was talking about we were a 500 ball club. He told us all, wait because they were going to be much, much better than the well, Orlando Magic. They didn't wait. They went out and made trades to improve their roster. So those, don't right. act like the team they had to start the season was a better team. The moves they made improved that basketball team. Than it is for most teams in this league, simply because you've got a head coach in the last year of his contract. You've got a GM in the last year of his contract. You've got Ray Allen approaching free agency. Steve, None of them Steve, know they're going to be there. This is not a pros. problem you they're need to have. They're not worried about their contract. Oh, they're pro. Really? They're not worried you, about their are contract. Are you saying that somebody's not worried about their contract and that money that comes with it? Are you, is that what, not am I quoting? Can I quote you on that? Quote me. Well, <laughs> we got to wait. We got to quote from Tim. We got to remember the Sonics. The you damn well better care about those who have paved the way for you to be in a position to benefit the way that they benefited in a way well, that we benefit. Well, I, I talked talk to him. him. So what? I talked to so him. Not to a quote that were put in the paper. I talked to Jermaine about what he said. Well, I talked to Jermaine about what he said. His quote is his quote. So I said he elaborated. I said his quote was ignorant. I never said he was ignorant. And that was wrong. Whatever. Well, you know, you may say that it's all harmonious in the locker room, but it's not evident as how they play the game right now. And again, the focus to me should be more on the defensive end. That's where this team has become mediocre at best. And again, to be a championship caliber team, they need to get back to that level. And when you got a middle-aged backcourt and you have a lot of guys in disarray in terms of what their roles are and an ineffective ability to defend the basketball, they have bigger issues there than they're letting on. Let me be politically incorrect. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, you're you're completely uh, united in believing that yeah, you're a quality divider, of team. Not a divider. I mean, give me a break. Of course you are. You you went to the Western Conference Finals. What's the news there, Flip Saunders? The fact is, you're not playing up to your potential. If you were a scrub, if you had a bunch of guys in your squad that couldn't play, then we wouldn't be phased by the fact that you've lost four consecutive games to sub 500 teams. We know this team is capable of going to the NBA Finals. You guys are just not playing like it. So, you tell me that 
Flip's okay there? Or is he going to be in trouble if this keeps going on? I say he has to be in trouble if this keeps going on. I don't think it will keep going on because you got the big ticket and my man is going to handle his business. And I think Latrell Sprewell and Sam Cassell are going to handle their business. But if you are Kevin McHale, you have to take a strong and hard look at Flip Saunders if this continues. This is a different situation. Now you have expectations in Minnesota. You didn't have that prior to last season. Now I don't think anything less than a conference finals appearance is acceptable. And the mediocrity they're displaying right now, you have to be concerned about Flip Saunders' job long term. So a whole bunch of guys that will I get think, away with I, I think Flip Saunders is... You got Larry Brown by the bedside. Oh, you got a problem with that? I got a problem with this. <laughs> Why me? I have oh, no not. problem with, with this whatsoever. The first thing I think of is unfortunate. Frank Anthony, must I say, you look quite dapper. I feel Minnesota. Minnesota will come out of the Western Conference. You all agree the Minnesota Timberwolves will win the NBA championship. I, I did not say that. Look what we found from our folks in Cleveland. A postcard sent to Stephen A. Smith saying, we wish you were here from the general manager and the coach. And they have the big guy in the middle. It's more about album promotion. This is G-Money, though. Can't nothing mess with that. But, but on a serious note, the questions I get most is, what do you guys do as you prepare for the show? Get on the floor and shake that booty. Come on, y'all. Let's get that to it. Please. Please. Well, first, yeah, please. Been, first, being a rapper is a pretty lucrative business. Yeah, John, can you, can you hear the voice of reason now? Please. please. I'm not worth $3 right now. I'll be the first to admit that. You That's it. horrible. Not realizing he could explode like that, but it's clear that he can. So do something about it. I Obviously, they're incapable of doing so with the numbers he's been I will up. say, I still think they're going to win the series. Eric Camp here, by the way, has played Dallas? well in Dallas. Dallas? He's still picking up. He's still picking up. He's kind of stuck that in right, right there. there. Yeah, no, no, right. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh -huh. Don't get, don't y'all did get on Greg. I'm proud of you. You didn't change your pick. No. You stuck to it. Can you shake my hand, man? You're stuck with your pick. You're stuck with your pick. <laughs> always no, you pick. don't. This no, you get the same all the time. When did I switch my pick? How, how many, how many, how many times do you want me to name count one. the ways? Name one. You, Detroit, <laughs> then you pick, then you switch on Detroit. Game, I'm talking about game to game. Shut up, John, take over. Game to game, I switch with John, this is, this is ancient history. You need to take over right now. All right? The man is sticking with Dallas. That has been, that has been established. We will find out tonight if the guy who's with Jim Gray now can get that not going to win a series in the playoffs playing that way. You know what? The other big thing about this that's ironic in a lot of ways is now this puts pressure on Chicago in terms of the free agency. Are they going to now have to commit the big dollars? Because this will only help Eddie Curry if this team does not play well without his presence out there. They may end up having to commit more dollars to him than they really? had thought they would initially. Well, that's, that's interesting. I didn't look at it that way. I thought that would be the perfect excuse, especially you, the Republican. You know how you like to save money. This man, I'm thinking, hey, that's a perfect excuse not to pay him that much money. Then who's going to take his place? That's true. That's true, but that <laughs> doesn't mean. Point. But again, you remember, he's restricted free agency. They've got the rights. They've got his rights. You're saying to yourself, wait a minute, we can limit the dollars we pay him now because we don't know about his health. Yeah, but again, there are teams out there who are going to be willing to pay Eddie Curry. And now it puts you, you in see, a situation. A regular once, well, I think you're both right on this situation. <laughs>